Clank? Clank? A Wombax? What is this place? Ratchet and Clank are back in their first original adventure in some years. Having only played the PS4 remake in this franchise, I was excited to jump back in to the world of crazy aliens, robots, and even crazier weapons. Let's take a look through space and time and see their new game on the PS5. As soon as the game starts, it becomes clear how impressive this game will be visually. Calling it near Pixar level animation at this point might even be underselling the quality that they're making these days. From the various characters that appear and the crazy effects during gameplay segments, Ratchet and Clank has never looked better. I personally love the bright and colorful world that it takes place in, which oozes charm. If you take a knee and look around, you might be surprised at the amount of detail that goes into even the smallest objects. Perhaps the most impressive things were the characters. While of course our main heroes get a lot of detail, it has also been doled out to even side characters too, which is really impressive. Eyes, fur, clothing, textures, and so on all look amazing. Thankfully, the same can be said about the sound. The voice acting is on point across the board, invoking a Saturday morning cartoon level of quality, which is really awesome. Sadly, the same can't really be said for the music, most of which was easy to tune out, or maybe even not hear. Either way, it was impressive from start to end. Some areas really do flex the PS5's might in interesting ways. Five planet destroying cannons and a surveillance state covering the entire city. If only that blasted dimensionator still worked. Clank. Huh? <laughs> 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 the game's story hits the ground running and doesn't waste much time. Our heroes Ratchet and Clank are separated across dimensions after an attack by the evil Dr. Nefarious. Soon after, Clank meets Rivet, another Lombax with a penchant for stopping evil plots with cool gadgets and weapons, not unlike Ratchet. Similarly, Ratchet too meets another robotic pal in the form of Kit. While they may be counterparts, there are enough differences in their situations to make the gimmick work well. While tracking down our main baddies, we get some interesting information about the world of Ratchet and Clank. It has some nice reveals for longtime fans and newcomers alike. The various stories of each location visited and how it moves along the main plot were fun to learn about, but All Killer No Filler is an apt description of the game's main story beats. Of course, newcomers Rivet and Kit are the main draw of the story. On the surface, they seem like one-to-one -one copies of the original leads, but as I mentioned, their small differences set them apart. They fit in well with the rest of the characters, and both are welcome additions to the bunch. I also really liked that none felt like they overtook the other in screen time. That said, the story leans a bit more on Rivet than Ratchet, but it sets up for more adventures between all four members in the future. Gameplay is something that Ratchet and Clank has always excelled in. Blending simple but fun platforming elements with fast and furious third-person shooting feels great once again. As someone who was traumatized quite heavily by platformers of the NES and Genesis era, its less hardcore stance is definitely welcome for me. Outside of jumping, there is the return of using hook wires to swing, glide, and shoot yourself across distances. They are not overly used and easy to navigate thanks to the game highlighting them well. And of course, the various grind rail segments return with their usual flair. Without spoiling anything, there is a really cool one waiting for players to see. There are a few ride sections as well where you jump onto a speedy bug and a flying dragon. But personally, I wasn't too fond of them, but thankfully they didn't last too long either way. 
The shooting feels equally as good, featuring a surprisingly large amount of weapons. Seriously, at one point I thought I found all the weapons, only to have several more arrive, and then even more on top of that once I beat the game. Each is and does feel unique thanks to the PS5 controller. Most weapons have their main fire by pulling down the trigger all the way, with a secondary function by pulling it down halfway. It's a neat way to spice things up, but none were revolutionary in that respect. Upgrading weapons also plays a big part of the game too. By upgrading them, you unlock basics like more damage or bigger clips, but you also can grab extra functions or effects too. Being able to upgrade your ice gun to have a big AoE of icicles is a powerful and awesome upgrade just as an example. In a single playthrough though, I wasn't able to unlock every node for each weapon, but I was able to see what most of them can do with pretty good reason to go in for a second playthrough. Speaking of unlockables, there are a good number of things to collect as well for side content. Gold bolts, rare titanium, weapons, armor, and more make a compelling case to check everywhere and discover everything. I was pretty happy to see that these were rarely done in the same way as well. Some are simply off the beaten path, and others ask you to get a bit creative with your exploration skills to get them. No one particular way overplays itself too much in this regard. Even better is that areas can be revisited at your leisure if you find you missed something. All of this wouldn't be as much fun if there were not any interesting combat encounters to complement them along the way. While most enemies don't fare much chance against the walking arsenal that is Rivet and Ratchet, they do provide a great chance to use your weapons in neat combinations. Even more so are the really neat bosses and mini-bosses, which tend to make a fun spectacle. No one encounter was ever really that difficult for me, and even though I was playing on normal, it never felt like it was a cakewalk either. Rounding things out are the gameplay segments not featuring Ratchet or Rivet. Clank, for example, engages in puzzles occasionally which involve him figuring out how to get certain NPCs from one side of the room to the other. This involves using things like speed, weight, bounces, and electricity to do so. The puzzles are nothing super difficult and don't wear out their welcome, thankfully. There are also missions featuring Glitch, a computer program out to destroy viruses in our character's way. These are fast-paced, shoot-em-up segments where the bases need to be destroyed to complete them. Once again, it's nothing too difficult, and Glitch herself is a pretty fun character to boot. Perhaps the best part about the gameplay is the pacing. Nothing wears out its welcome in this game, which is something I always love. The game just has a great pace to it and rarely lets itself get bogged down in the nonsense. I do have a few small gripes with it as well. There are two large open maps to explore and do a number of collectibles once the main objectives are done. If you take the time to do everything, it might drag a bit, but it depends on how much you meander. I should note that there were a small variety of glitches I came across. These were infrequent and never happened during main gameplay, but they definitely happened several times. For example, NPCs T-posing or being stuck in animation loops, and the, in a more odd case, platforms not loading after a teleport. Once again, they didn't happen during the main gameplay, and only when I was poking around looking for goodies. Needless to say, I really enjoyed my time with Ratchet and Clank. As someone who doesn't really like platformers still, this one made a good case for itself with a pretty cozy traversal combined with a combat system that never got frustrating. Couple that with a story that kept things moving at all times, it made it easy to have a great time with. After about 15 hours or so when the credits rolled, the game even gives you a few options for a new game plus, which is always fun. If you're a fan of the franchise, it's an obvious recommendation. It's the same great Ratchet and Clank we've come to know and love over the years. Tie that package in with the beautiful visual presentation and you're good to go. If you're like me and not super jazzed on platformers, then this might be a good game to try. Personally, I really enjoyed it and recommend it immensely.
As always, thanks for watching and leave a like and a follow if you enjoyed the video. Of course, leave a comment and tell a friend. It really helps spread the word about my channel. Thank you very much.